to view them. All right, so let's make a, a formal introduction for our listener here. Uh, good afternoon, Vern. My name is Claudio. I'm calling you from Washington, D.C., from the students in Fairfax City. We're very humble and grateful that Vern Kirsten Maggie accepted our invitation to our show. Vern, welcome to the show, man. Hello, Claudio. Thank you for uh, the invitation and many greetings from Berlin. Okay, same here. Uh, so let's let's start now with the, with the pandemic. Um, you know, this has been going on for a year and a half now, and uh, how the the COVID has affected your your life, your sanity, your inability to tour much, and how you how you hold it up, man. Um, yes, it, uh, I will try to describe this because um, the, the pandemic itself uh, infected me not so much as uh, many other people. So I, I went no si not sick and, and so on. And we all were, were asked to stay at home and to, to, uh, to not to communi communicate too much with other people. So it was, we, we were not in the crowds, the, the shops were closed and so on. We had the lockdown, of course. The, the time was very hard for many people, but for me, I mainly work at home. So I'm, I'm a, I would describe myself as a home officer, yes. And uh, uh, this is what I permanently do. So I missed not so much, I must say, yes. And I um, I choose, I took the time and I, I, I understood the whole process as a chance to um, evolve my own skills and to, to do something new. For for my example, I, um, I, I, I did a lot of concerts or I, I did a lot of records until let's say 2017. And uh, then I had, um, yes, uh, my mother died and I had, I came into a, a period where I, I started to think about my life, about what I expect from the rest of my life, what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do in the future. And um, so I decided uh, not longer to follow this path and to try out uh, something new. And the first, uh, what I started was to to write a book, which is now finished but not published. Um, it, it's a book about my own story and the story of uh, Berlin School of Electronic Music. The the guys you mentioned, uh, I, I talk with them too. Yes, and yeah. I, I did yeah. many interviews with them, and and it's a very interesting story because um, I understood that and, and realized that my uh, my existence cannot be described without telling the stories which happened before yes before my before my career and this is the more important part because there are so many yes I, I say silent heroes which uh, did their little things to which came together in this in the 60s and in, in the early 70s that created later the Berlin School of Electronic Music. It's not only the artists, that are, this is many people around there in the background which never became famous or known, yes. And um, the Electronic Beat Studio is also a part of this story, yes. And so this is the one thing I did. And the second thing is um, for my whole life when I started 1981 with making electronic music, with producing and learning, understanding synthesizers, I um, uh, permanently tested for, for yes, shows or for, for magazines synthesizer. So I presented them and, and I tested them. And I write articles uh, and about new equipment and whatever is happening around us. So I have uh, over all these years and or decades, I must say, um, I have a writing experience, I would say, yes. And um, <clears throat> I wanted to lift this whole thing up on another level. And I started in at the, after, after the unveiling of the plague of, for the Electronic Beat Studio in December, last December, I started uh, my own uh, YouTube channel and uh, brought my skills together, writing, testing, synthesizers, making music, and the whole thing, I call it Freak Out Your Sin, and you find <laughs> it in my, 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 my YouTube channel. 
And um, yes, it's a combination of everything. And I, I bring a lot of personality in all this. And uh, yes, I hope the people like it. So this is mainly what I do to, today. And to do this, I had to learn a lot of things. And I, I took the time, I, I, I took this chance uh, during the pandemic to learn, to, to, to understand how the things work. And uh, I, I bought a lot of filming stuff. And so, and my studio is more a film studio than a music studio today. But uh, <laughs> yes, it's, it's, it's I, I'm still making music, of course. But uh, um, I, yes, I do it in another way. Gotcha. Maybe maybe one day you all will have the chance to to visit the the studio and, and take take some pictures together there. Yeah, yeah so. you are welcome. Yeah, yeah sure. thank you. Is the book when it's done? Is going to be only uh, released in in, uh, in German or in English as well? <clears throat> Actually, it's written in German, but I would also uh, like to 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 translate it. And uh, I think it's more interesting for in the national um, audience, yeah, and and uh, in readers. But um, yes, the first step is to find a publisher which wants to 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 publish this book because this is really a problem of the pandemic. Um, the publishers were down also as, as everybody was and now the, the process, um, the business is uh, starting again slowly yeah. and um, yeah, I'm, I'm very optimistic that I will find one, but um, it, it, it took a little bit long, more time than, than I expected, yes. Gotcha, gotcha, right. Were you born like, um, like in a musical family? How old were you when you began taking, uh, you know, uh, piano lessons, and I, I understand that my understanding is that your your father yeah, my, had a deep influence on you as well. Yeah, my 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 father influenced me. He was um, also a talented uh, piano player, but um, he didn't follow this path because it was maybe also a problem of uh, permanent training. I don't know, but but um, yes, later he took the responsibility for his uh, family and um, stopped with playing music but he tried to teach me playing piano and we did it uh, a, a decent time but we both uh, had no fun by doing it he was no good teacher to me and I was no good um, um, yes um, I, I was not good in understanding what he wanted and training and so on but um, the love for keys uh, state yes and uh, and uh, later i uh, began with the age of 10 to become a fan of uh, psychedelic and uh, electronic music later electronic music came later first it was psychedelic rock that that uh, that kind of um, experimental music stuff which was never uh, heard before and i was uh, yes 10 11 year, years old when uh, um, I came in contact with music from Kraftwerk and from, from Pink Floyd and so on. And um, yes, that influenced me my, my whole life and my, my childhood. And later I, I discovered what in the same time had happened in Berlin with, with Tangerine Ream, with Klaus Schulze, with Michael Hönig. And um, when I listened uh, to their music, I was totally captured by this and 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 this was my thing and it was my music and um i became a big klaus schulze fan the klaus schulze was my man because uh, he did things uh, all others didn't do and um yes uh, his music uh, yes uh, opened my heart however i wanted to do the same and uh, also when when this guys uh, decided to uh, to go another musical pass I wanted to to stay on this Berlin school thing and when I um, was 20 years old 21 years old I bought my first synthesizer and I started to to learn and to play and to record and yes it's the beginning of my my career it's, and um, yeah you still have the synthesizer or no no it's gone Yes, again, it, it, my first synthesizer was uh, uh, one from a Korg. It's called Monopoly. Uh, 
Yeah. And um, it was uh, affordable for me because I ever wanted to have a mini Moog, uh, but but I couldn't pay. F I didn't have the money for. But um, this guy had some uh, more possibilities and uh, it was, uh, yes, affordable. And so I, I got the Monopoly and I still have one. Yes. Okay, that's great. Man. You remember the first vinyl that you bought in your on your own? What, what what kind of music were you? I mean, beside the, you know, the the, the Klaus Schulz and Tangerine Dream and Edgar Frosty and all those people. And um, what what the first vinyl? Remember that you bought in your own? You remember vinyl records? My my first first vinyl. One of the was, first. Yeah. I really by my very first single was. Uh, uh, I, I guess it was from Susie Quattro or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was a time of glam rock and so on. So I, I, of course, I liked this. And uh, no, but, but my my first uh, serious LP uh, was really um, Kraftwerk One. Yeah, Kraftwerk, was, yeah. Yes, it was, I, I, I had listened to, to Ruckzuck and this was, uh, yes, really freaking out this thing. It still is. And uh, one of the best from Kraftwerk, I still sing. And uh, um, yes, that was my music. And it was my first LP. I had to give my whole money and, and to save it for, for, for weeks and months. And uh, I, um, I, I still remember I went with my mother into a record shop in a large in Berlin and I bought this LP and this was Oh, so it was, and I played it down and down and down, and uh, I I don't know how many hundred times I played this track. Yes, where were you, your parents? So at the time you were like twenty twenty one, you needed to go uh, make a decision and say, well, either it is after um, after the equivalent of high school, the gymnasium in Germany, uh, either go to university or pick a career in music. You were you were your parents supportive or 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 it was a difficult decision for you to make when you were twenty years old because you you had was yeah. yeah you've been listening to music for a while already right and you say man I like Klaus Schulz I like Michael Horn I like yeah Tangerine Dream guys and uh, how you how you make decision and um, about becoming a musician or or going to get a job or go to university um, I must say I was not very honest to myself uh, by by following this path directly uh, after school um i i i uh, i learned a, a job yes i i i was uh, i i i am a carpenter yes it's, it's unbelievable but uh, wow. yeah that that was my that was my job and uh, I, before I go to um, to I, before I wanted to go to the university, I wanted to uh, to have a basis, yes. And uh, and um, then I I went to the university and um, I started to study. But yes, I can can be honest in this uh, in this point. Um, I was not good enough in in uh, arithmetic, yes, and. Um, it was too much for me, uh, but in, in, in parallel, I, I um, developed my career as as electronic musician. Yes, and th this became more and more important. And um, at the end of the uh, 80s, yes, early beginnings of the 90s, I, 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 I founded a little family. And this meant um, a lot of responsibility. Yes, and I had to earn money again, and everything was always in parallel. Yes, it was no, no um, um, career as a musician, so a, a professional career, you can say. But um, I understood many, many years later uh, that this was not the solution for my life. And I, I, in, in, in two, 2009, uh, very late, I uh, decided to, to, to stop with my job and to stop with everything and uh, be musician only. And since then, I would describe myself as a professional because I have to earn my money for a living uh, from music which is difficult enough oh absolutely absolutely oh, last night i was listening to uh, the album from 1987 i think it's called wake up in the sun that in many people consider them one of the one of your classic albums and uh, and you know feel free to elaborate on that album i don't know if that's the first one or one of the 
uh, one of the, the the first one, right? It was it was the first one you have done or no? Wake up in the sun or no? Um, I started in 1984 with a production of uh, music cassettes. So, so this my, my first album was uh, Romantic Times, and yeah. it was released uh, released on on um, on, on a music cassette. And the second album was uh, Music from Outer Space, and it was also released on on, uh, on music cassette. But then I felt this was not professional enough for me, and it was time to produce a real recording album yes and and um i started with head visions that is you can say this is my really first release as a professional musician yeah and uh, this was <clears throat> um, a full-length album head visions was very successful because it was my <clears throat> yes you can say my love declaration to to the music uh, of uh, klaus schulze so this was my i wanted to 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 tell his stories a little bit longer in my interpretation. So this is Head Visions about. And um, the second album after this was 1987, um, Wake Up in the Sun. And yeah. <clears throat> this is interesting because um, at this time I decided to uh, to found my own uh, label. Yeah. That was uh, Music en Temporel called. Now it's uh, later it became the name MI Records. It still has uh, this name. And uh, with Music en Temporel, I wanted to uh, produce my own uh, music um, and um, also the music from other artists. And um, yes, uh, it was also the step 1987-88 um, where compact discs entered the market. That, that was brand new in those days and uh, um, so wake up in the sun became the first release on cd uh, on a yes uh, non commercial commercial or non profit uh, non profit label you can say yeah uh, it was a, was a, was a self production and amazing expensive unbelievable yes but yes it was the way it was the future in those days did you end up selling a lot of them CDs and then but there was an <clears throat> issue on buying as well, right? On a there was first the issue on on, on, on vinyl and in parallel then on on, on CDs. Yeah. yeah. Were, were you selling enough record to make a little bit of money to recover that investment? Uh, you never sell enough, I would say. Uh, but but <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> but I mean, um, yes. It is a niche market. You, 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 it's no, not uh, the big thing ever. But uh, in those days, there were a, a lot of fans. That, that was a fortunate situation that also this music, our music, was played in public radio. So this is something that happens doesn't happen today. Yes, you, you, today you can listen to techno or whatever, but in those days you could listen to Berlin School or to Kraftwerk, to Düsseldorf scene and whatever. And um, so there was a big chance to uh, to to become listened by people which normally don't listen to this music, and this wa was a good influence on on the sales. Yes, that's that's of course. You yeah, having a radio playing your music that's unbelievable. And I and I I I read also that you collaborated with Harold Croftpoff in that album as well, right? Which I had yeah, the opportunity uh, to interview him as well. He's a very nice person too. So. Hello. Yes, yeah. we, we played together. Yes, I invited uh, him for um, doing two concerts in, in Cologne and one in Berlin in those days. It was in the 90s, early 90s. And yeah. then uh, we produced uh, uh, um, uh, a an, an solo album. Uh, or a, a co a co yes, a cooperation. It was a 50-50 it was album called uh, Characters, um, which describes the situation very good, I think. And um, yes, from the concerts, we had some live releases, but um, then, yes, that was our cooperation. It was a good time we had. Good, that's great. Feel free to elaborate in, um, I think uh, in 2001, right, you, you needed to make a difficult decision and um, because the sales on MI, MI record were not doing that well, and you need to, you know, put everything concerning music aside for a while, and I was, it was a difficult decision for you to make and 2001 was a terrible time because um yes and uh, some years 
before the, the whole uh, thing started first with internet. Uh, yes, it was was the first um, movements in the uh, in the net um, and uh, possibilities for also for artists to to self market. So they they no longer needed a, a record label to release their music. That was the one thing. The other thing was that it became um, very uh, common to uh, produce uh, so-called CDRs. So you could um, you could print your own CDs with your own music or whatever music without um, moving so much money. And um, that was a really killer for my label and for my activities because I, 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 my label was more a classic one with a record contract and um, with the uh wish to to uh, yeah how can i say it um, to to work for a longer time with a special artist yes to produce yeah. more records and um that was uh, the time had come that this process this uh, this way didn't work no longer for yes it was over and um, I had really uh, financial problems that was a financially a disaster. And um, I also was uh, invited uh, to participate on a festival in, uh, in Italy uh, where, where several hundred people were uh, announced to come. And uh, finally, um, I, I worked for, for weeks and months for this show and I, I did my best and uh, had a lot of costs to go there. And um, then uh, I don't know, 15 people were, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> so oh. it, was, it was a total disaster. And um, yes, it was the moment when I said this whole thing makes no longer sense to me, yes. And I stopped everything. I sold my synthesizers and I, I uh, yes, I, I went into an office job and uh, I thought, yes, it would be okay for the rest of my life. But what I said uh, before is, is what happened. I, I, um, I was not honest to myself in this point. And uh, a couple of years later, the, my feelings and my wishes uh, returned, and I, 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 um, I, I see myself looking out of this, the, the the window, and I saw saw the life of other people going by, and and my my life was terrible, boring, and this is not just what I wanted for for my life, and then I stopped with it, and as I said, 2009, I returned to to making music and producing records. And it's, making that's records. it. Yeah, that's a beautiful story. That's uh, in my record, it still exists. I don't know. As a label, sorry, I, sorry, sorry, the record label still exists in my record. Or? MI records is still existing, but only yeah. for my um, for my own uh, music. And you find it on, on Bandcamp. Yeah, in Bandcamp, I noticed that you have all the do you sell? Do you sell a lot? Do you, it's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. Yes, um, I, I know. In the meantime, I have stopped producing CDs because that ma makes no longer sense. We, we are in a digital world, and and if people yeah. want to get some music which is not free, they will download. They will obtain download downloads and, and nothing nothing else. So I, I would not um, longer invest money into uh, vinyls or, or CDs. That's for me. That's over. If if somebody else wants. Yes, welcome. But um, for me, it's okay to produce uh, downloads. Yes, yeah. And, and, yeah, I, I'm not so a big fan. Uh, I can say from streaming, uh, whatever, because um, we all know what you can, uh, what money you can earn from streaming, and uh, this makes also no sense. I, I, I mean, it, it it makes no sense to to um, to build a studio with with uh, tons of synthesizers and equipment, and and then you you produce. Uh, your music from heart, yes, and then you sell it for parts of a part, yes, uh, yeah. of, of, a, of, a, of a cent. <laughs> I don't know. Like, so, like it's so, Spotify, right? It's Spotify, you get. For example, Spotify and. and, and 6,000 or 1 cent. Yeah. No, no, I don't participate to that. 
And I must say, a Bandcamp is the only platform which is really honest fair. to the artist. Yes, of course. very. I fair. think they only take like ten percent, right? And you get the other ninety percent. So. And you get it immediately. Immediately, and you have not to wait uh, six months or or twelve months. You get it if if you have sold it, and this is great. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and a lot of people that I have interview and every musician complain the same about Spotify. I think you get zero point zero zero six cents or or every time that somebody plays your music on Spotify, which is very unfair, right? You need to have like a million hits. To, to get a, a check for a hundred dollars, you know, as opposed to in that camp, you can sell your own music and, and do okay. 10,000 10, uh, downloads for a pizza, it's no, it makes no sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> of course, yeah. no, no, that, that, a lot of people complain about that. Uh, and, um, so let, let, let's talk about a little bit of, um, you know, in 2009, uh, you you have like another uh, a, re, a new life. You were reborn again. Uh, you know, I think you dismissed the job, and then you began rebuilding the studio and uh, and uh, and put your life back into it. What's your your <laughs> a personal question? What's your you know you sold some of the equipment and you needed to buy them back? And what's your your wife, your kids didn't 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 complain. <laughs> then my, my dad again was going to quit the job and then go back to the music. It was It was like yeah, a I slow must, process. I must say it was a very egoistic decision. Yes. And uh, it uh, was not easy for my family. Sure. And um, yes, I'm, I'm still sorry for that. But I, I had to go this way. I, I, there was no emotionally, there was no other chance for me. And um, Yes, but they they have understood what what I am moved from 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 what I am moved and uh, it is okay now I would say yes, but um, that means also that I uh, have to keep my ass up and to be busy and to be uh, very focused on the things that I do to show them uh, it's 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 really uh, an important thing to me. It's no hobby or whatever. Yes, so I give, I gave a lot of up, uh, of things up, and uh, I risked a lot of, and um, uh, yes, it was no, not easy for all of us. Yes, it was also a terrible time. You can imagine. Yes. Well, you might so, right? And then after that, the seven-year break, uh, you make a new entrance yeah. into electronic music with your album. It's called Celestial Movement, which is a very, very good album, actually. Thank you very much. Yes, it, is, uh, it was the time when I uh, started or came together with uh, Bernd Scholl from uh, Melojet Records. It's a yeah. little label in, in Germany. And um, he was uh, building up his label at this time and um, he was looking for artists and he also is a believer. Yes, and he, he believes in the things that he does and that are important for him. And we came together and um, yes, uh, he gave me the chance and I'm still very thankful for that. And uh, I, I produced some uh, 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 records for him and for his label. And um, yes, later we decided to go our own ways. And I, then I returned to my own label because it was easier to focus on my own career for 100% and not doing nothing else but in looking, yeah, can you promote this and can you promote that? And he has so many other, this is a problem. I'm, it's very good that you, you talk about this because this is an uh, experience that I also made when I uh, run the label with other artists. You must, there comes the point where you must decide if you work for yourself or if you work for others. Yeah. And this becomes very fast a conflict. Yes, I, I didn't expect it. I, I, I thought, yes, uh, a label, running a label with other artists could become a second leg, uh, economically uh, spoken. But um, no, that was not, uh, there was a point where I should have decided to, to run the label only or to run the career only. And um, it didn't work for me. And um, I, I saw also 
when I worked together with Mellowjack Records, that this didn't work. When, if I am an artist who has signed somewhere else, you have expectations. And if they are not uh, fulfilled, you become nervous, yes? And um, that, that was no good feeling. So then we, we decided to depart from each other and I got my rights back. And um, then I started uh, in 2012. Uh, to to do my own business only again and in, in do i think when you um is it true that when you end up releasing the album celeste and movement you you did the i think it was a concert in in paris in france yeah well correct how tell feel free to elaborate on on that experience yeah, because my, that would have I, been very important to you you know after yeah, this, leaving this your was, job putting your life career and going back to electronic music and going playing in this, paris you know. Yes, this was uh, um, the return, uh, the beginning of my return, you can say. I had this album and I had uh, the opportunity uh, to participate on a concert in Paris, uh, which was organized uh, with some very good friends from uh, friends from France. And uh, um, we are still connected today. And um, yes, they were also electronic fans. Yes, um, yeah. they run a, a, yes a fan association, Cosmic KGB. I don't know if you if you if they are still active. Yes, maybe you find them in the in the uh, internet. But um, in those days, they were very uh, very active, and um, they invited me for a concert in Paris. And yes, it was in 2009, and um, this was my jump back. So you can say. Yeah, that that that's that 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 beautiful story, you know. To um, I, I think I related to that. Which album did you do that you end up? I think um, it was like a um, observatory that you guys were helping out at the beginning. I think it's called. That's why I don't know the Halde how how war. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, uh, no, that is, this was not, there, were not, there was never a, a, a concert, it was just a dream. I, I um, you can see it, it's an uh, so called uh, horizontal observ observatory. It's, yeah. it's uh, yes, it's uh, in, it's an in installation on a mountain in the in the German Ruhrgebiet, and um, that was planned as an, uh, uh, yes, uh, you could follow the stars and the sun and, and whatever, the moon, and it was like uh, like a giant globe on a mountain. Uh -huh. Yes, so two, two bows, two bows, yeah. uh, and uh, it's, it's looking fantastic if you are uh, going uh, over that hill. But the whole installation uh, has uh, since many, is closed since many years because there were technical problems and, um, and, and there was in the very first beginning an idea to to perform on that hill a concert, but that never happened. But I I I, I loved the the image, and this was the idea for celestial uh, uh, movements. Yes, you see it on the cover. It's, it's I have uh, seen on the cover that yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah 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 I have the album. The the other album that I really like as well, and perhaps one of the one that maybe you are. Most famous for is is uh, a kaleidoscope. Okay, and uh, I really like that album. And a lot of for a lot of people, that's a very turning point and a very good album in the world of electricity. I don't know if you for you, you. It was the same. Uh, it's a very it's a very uh, see it's difficult because for me as a consumer of your music, right? You know I. I buy a lot of your music, and I, according to Claudio, this is the best album. But perhaps I call it to burn. Maybe it's not the best album. What what is your what's your opinion on that? Um, this is um, the idea. Yeah, I, I must say I must go back. It was in in 1988 when I um, got uh, the opportunity to play in in here in Berlin in the planetarium. Um, we have we have two of them, one in East Berlin, one in, in, in West Berlin, and th that was the times of West Berlin still, and we had our playtime not far away from here. And um, they had a problem because um, the, the cupola was burned down. 
So, and they had to invest a lot of money for, for reconstruct the whole thing. And uh, then um, in 1987, 88, they, they were ready with the, with the buildings and everything. And there was planned to reopen it, um, to reopen the house. And I, I had the idea together with um, my friend in those days, Mario Schönwälder, um, to uh, to organize a benefit concert for 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 this house and um, at least it became three shows in two days and I I I started to compose music for for this event and uh, this was um, a 50 minute long track called Ferne Ziele yes and this was the the very first version of it and it, it was the first time when I um, combined analog synthesizers with uh, with a computer. I had an Atari in those days, Atari 1040 ST, and it was the days when when we started to uh, to produce music also with with MIDI and so on, uh, MIDI connections and uh, MIDI synthesizer, MIDI control control synthesizer came up on the market, and so that was also a time of of change technology technologically seen. And uh, um, yeah, I, we played three shows for this uh, in the early beginnings, and from from this material. I started to uh, produce an album. And um, one year later, uh, I, I, after I have had be also be, be, become known in the German Democratic Republic, um, I, I got the invitation to participate on a huge electronic festival in the in the city of Dresden. And um, that was uh, the Electronic Lives event. And um, yes, it was the biggest thing in, in my in my life until then, because um, the main act from uh, from West Germany was Klaus Schulze. And I was the second act. And then two known acts from the German Democratic Republic were invited. Uh, that was the, pan, the band uh, Pond. And the, the other band was uh, Servi called, yes. And um, so there were four bands playing. Main act was Klaus Schulze. And I played um, this music from Kaleidoscope. This was the album. And um, the crazy thing is that it, the whole event happened in, in August 1989. And um, that was uh, four months before the wall came down. Yes, in November 89, the wall came down and everything changed. And um, yes, you could feel a little bit uh, rumors there, here and there. Everybody was somehow nervous, but we were playing in front of more than 7,000 people and it was uh, a huge event and it was fantastic. And uh, yes, I, I came uh, with my uh, electronic keyboard castle and Klaus Schulze came with his stuff and uh, there were tons of equipment on the stage and for for the audience. I, I, some of them who attended there then uh, are still speaking from this uh, event, yes. That was great. Well, that, is, is that that particular concert was ever recorded or released at all? Um, yes, the concert was released on on one of my albums. I must show show. Uh, I, I don't know what. Uh, <clears throat> there's a title. I know. Give me a second, please. Yeah, so take, can... take your time. Take your time. Uh... Yeah, I, I would need to listen. Yeah, um, you, um, this, is, this is simple. You can find the album on, on Bandcamp. Uh, it's yeah. called Dresden 0889. And yeah. um, that was two tracks, Music for 7,000 Dreamers. And uh, yeah. yeah, that's that's uh, um, that's the title. Uh, Dresden 0889. Okay, oh, yeah. I got to make sure that I listen to the stuff. Uh, although you have changed gear, I mean, from analog to, uh, you know, with a new, with new technology and digital keyboard nowadays, are you still using a lot of analog equipment? And is that, is that a preference of yours? 
Yeah, more, more than ever before. Of course, I, I produce in the box. I, 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 I use Cubase from, from Steinberg. Yeah, yes, and there's everything inside. But um, from uh, hardware, you can, can see here in the back uh, uh, my uh, yeah. very, very, very loved uh, synthesizer from GRP, the A4. And on the other side is the ARP 2600. So analog stuff is still the thing, yes. Yeah, many, yeah, many musicians I have interviewed and people that do compose music for film, they are going back to the analog stuff. The yeah, that makes is. sense because uh, uh, analog sound synthesis is um, still the thing right. since uh, 50, 60 years. And uh, if you if you are looking for um, a special kind of sounds which are dance character, very, very, very uh, intense sounding somehow, it's not, it's very difficult to describe. But if you, if you, if you are looking for a special kind of sound, you, you must use analog synthesizers. There's no, plugins are very, very interesting, very perfect today. And uh, you can do uh, music or sounds with uh, plugins which are impossible to realize with uh, hardware synthesizers. But um, you, as we all do, we combine all worlds. We use a little bit here and a little bit there. And, and so, and um, the result is a layer, a, a mixture of everything, I would say. Yeah, that's great. I, have you ever, I, I think I read somewhere you, um, I don't know, you ever compose um, music for films, or I think I, I read that you, you compose music for imaginary film, film that do not exist. And uh, have you been hired to do a uh, composition for a uh, doing a film score? Or? Unfortunately, not because. Uh, but this is my biggest wish in my life, I must say, yeah. because uh, after leaving so much behind um, the whole record business, you can say, um, I, I always think that my music fits perfectly to to music in uh, in a film yes to, yeah. to, uh, to 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 movies whatever but um, you can imagine it is so hard to enter this uh, uh, this scene and if you have no connections or no uh, no requests or no nobody says uh, okay your music is interesting i would like to use it in my film so this is so difficult and but i i still feel and i still think uh, um, films would be the best place for my music. Yes. Yeah. That you, that I, you're in dream from, from sound. And from sound, I'm still um, thinking that I make music for the big screen. Yes. Uh, so it's 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 very opulent and very very massive sometimes, and I think this this fits very good for for beautiful Absol images. Ab absolutely. Tangier and Dream, for example, have done like over I don't know fifty or sixty film score. You know and. Uh, Yes, they had the luck to enter the market uh, when nobody else did uh, exactly. electronic music for films. That was something <clears throat> yeah. new in those days. Yes, and uh, then um, they had opened a door for many yeah. others. You, yeah. you need to go. I think you need to convince Hans Zimmer to use your music for some of. <laughs> yeah, we we know each other, and um, yes, it's yeah. very difficult to get him. I must say, I have my experience from uh, from the memorial plague times. Um, yes, he's so busy, and he has his uh, he has his guys. And I I must be honest, I I'm sure I'm too old for 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 this uh, heavy. No, come business. on, yes. no, no, ah, no. come on. <laughs> you're not. You're you're doing very good this year. Hopefully yeah, one maybe, day. Maybe yeah. he's listening to our, our interview and he will say, oh, Bernd Kistma, yes, it's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I, I would love to, uh, hopefully I will, one day I will have the opportunity to interview uh, Hans Zimmer because I like his music. And uh, also I would like to interview Bernard Herzog, of course, because I, I like his music. I began little by little doing some interview about film scores, film composer, and then... Um, and then I go and hopefully we'll have the opportunity to interview, uh, uh, you know, directors as well. Because in the case of um, um, Bernard Herzog, he, he he used to work for people with, with from Bubble Boo, 
And uh, the, I don't know if you know the music is very, very good. The yeah, I know. Yes. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. So I, um, I'm interview one person. And then when I'm Germany, I'm going to be interviewing another person that one of the few left from the original Bob and Busta. So uh, I like, uh, I like all kind of music, man. I, I, for electronic music, for pop, for film score, for jazz, for rock, I have a, a wide range of stuff that I listen to. And uh, being able to now interview all those famous people like yourself, you know, it's an honor for me. I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I, I do, I have my day job. This is, this is, I do this for fun, you know. Uh, all my radios are free. I have a lot of music. I pay music rights. Um, you know, they're 24 hours a day. Uh, no advertising, no social media. Music and interviews that for, forever are going to be free. So one day in 50 years from now, the internet exists. They exist somebody say, hey, who was Klaus Schulze? Uh, who was Byrne? Who is uh, Manuel Goshi? Who is Michael Honey? We listen to the interviews. They're all there. They're always going to be free. So it's it's an honor for me to <laughs> to talk to talk to you guys. But um, looking back in your career, I mean, there are many moments that are special for you. Any 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 regrets or things you could have done differently? I mean, for example, oh, yes. right? If you have not left in two hundred one to get to get, you know, to get a job and then coming back in, in 209, right? Those were eight years, right? Or nine years that you could have done a lot of great stuff. Maybe, maybe not, right? Maybe it was no. reason to for you to walk away and then come back with new ideas, new energy, new ways to do look, do things. No, no, in this special case, I, I do not regret my, my decision. I, I, I still feel that was, it was important and it was a good one. Um, but <clears throat> if I look back, yes, um, there are some, some moments also in the beginning of my career where I think I believed and trusted in two wrong, into the wrong persons and to the wrong friends yes that really? was really that that was really a, 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 i will not go too much into details but there were some moments if i could um, restart them uh, i would really do other decisions and uh, the other problem is i i um, i was too late uh, self-confident about that what i wanted to do i i, I listened too much on Ah, you should do this and you should do that and and go this way and go that way and uh, yes, I should have been more confident in in doing the right thing because if you if you follow the path of your heart, you 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 know what you have to do. You 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 really know this, yes. And um, I I allowed my to myself to to often to get disturbed in those. Uh, Yes, decisions. Yeah. yeah, but yes, it's all. Everything is life. That is like it is, yeah. and uh, I don't. I don't know. Next time, better. <laughs> yeah, sometime in life, you know, you need to make a left turn, a right turn, left turn, and yeah. then that take you somewhere, as opposed to going that way, whatever that yeah. means. Yeah, and that's you know maybe maybe it's a permanent learning process, and maybe maybe it's important that you go the wrong way to to understand what the right way is for you maybe this is a learning process yes yeah um how in your opinion how berlin well, of course berlin is well known for well many many for many political reasons but for the music point of view for the bill berlin is this berlin school of music and the the, the uh, for that many electronic musicians how in the world you know, the, the Edgar Frosse, the, the Klaus Schulze, Peter Baumann, yourself, uh, Edgar Frosse, Tangerine Dream, and many, many, many. How, how, how many in the world, you know, in a, in, a, in a city called Berlin, you know, so many, many great musicians of electric music where they, they, they came. What was, how, what, how they, please, please describe the, 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 music, the music scene in, in Berlin, like 40 years ago and nowadays, how would, what do you think that Berlin is well known to be the, 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 the school of music? Uh, to be honest, um, Berlin is today known for lots of different music, but yeah. not for Berlin school. I would say Berlin school of electronic music um, found an 
silent end at the end of 1989 when the wall came down because yeah. the, the time changed completely and um, that was no longer the old uh, mood of um, very comfortable comfortable living in, in, in West Berlin, for example, because West Berlin was an island that no longer existed. Yes. And um, it's it's uh, interesting to see that really with, a, with a, that moment when the wall came down, the music changed completely. And um, we all know that was the moment when, when everything started with techno and with club music and it was electronic dance music. And um, <clears throat> yes, sometimes if you um, listen to journalists today, uh, which are reporting about electronic music from Berlin, uh, they, de they don't know that something happened before 1990. It's, it's really like that. And um, we all uh, are not, um, have maybe not uh, that de deserved place in, in, in music history, which one of them have deserved. Yes, for example, Tension Dream or Klaus Schulze. Also one reason why, because uh, why I, I, I am, uh, uh, why I initiated this uh, memorial plate for the electronic beat studio, because it, it's important now, Uh, before everything goes forgotten uh, to, to remember in this period of time where such um, uh, musical yeah, um, development was, was possible. Yes, it was, that was in the 60s and 70s, that was a special time where many new ideas came together, also new technologies, and, and where also young musicians were fed up by, by old structures and wanted to do something completely new, not to replay the boring music from, from wherever, and to create something new. And that was the basis for that, what we know as Berlin School. Yes, and um, this is now on, there's a danger to, to become forgotten. Everything is past, yes, yeah, of yeah. course. And uh, it, it's, it makes also not sense to, to, to uh, cry a tear about the good old times. They, they are over, it's, this is fact. Yes. But something important in music history happened there. And this is important yeah, to, yeah. To, to remember in that. And with techno, um, Yes, um, also also many guys which started with techno are in the age today where they say, oh, the good old times of techno. Yes, so, so everything goes goes <laughs> by, yes. And uh, um, yes, that's that's normal in life, I think. But um, yes, it was a special time where, where some good things came together, yes. Yeah, I will, I, I, I have an idea that I will, I will not tell you, but I will tell you, when we meet in Berlin, it's something that I want to do. Uh, I, I, I have an idea about uh, a way to um, commemorate, like in a park, in a public park or something. I, I, I have the idea here. I need, to, I need to okay work it out, but I will tell you there that I want to I wanna do something, something I'm nice. I'm excited to know. <laughs> oh, you're going, you're going to like it. I know exactly what I want to do. Wanna do when, uh, And, uh, and, and, and commemorate because um, for two reasons, right? One is a selfish reason for me, uh, electronic music is very important in my life. And, uh, and uh, you know, all the, all the big names, right? Everybody knows like Peter Baum and Klaus Schulze, yourself, Harold and uh, Mario and all the, all the big names, but Tangerine and Dream. But, um, but there are many people that are perhaps early in the beginning, didn't make it, and, and, and you know, and, and of course, Klaus Schulz is one probably the, the best. Ed, Klaus Schulz and Edgar Frosty, you know, who doesn't, it's not with us anymore. Are, well, no, there are many, many people that perhaps didn't make it, right? That, that they were good musicians, you know. And mm -hmm. uh, number two, my family, I never told you, but my family came from Munich, actually. And uh, uh, in the 1882, 1882, there was a big migration of, Um, Italians, about 10,000 families from Italy moved to Argentina, and then about 10,000 families from Germany moved to the south of Chile. I was born in, in Chile. 
Yeah. So in, in Chile, in the south of Chile, it's a big, big German community. So uh, my mother last name is Hoferberg. So of course, I don't speak the language and I was born in Chile and then I came to the United States to study. But uh, I, if it wasn't for my German ancestor that came from Munich, and that's the reason I'm going to Munich, is a, a couple of graves that I always visit. If it wasn't for them, our upbringing would have been very different, very uh, different. So I'm, I'm very grateful to, uh, you know, my family and South Germany and, and, and uh, from Munich and then to the Electronic School of Music that has given me a lot of satisfaction. So, so this is a very special return to, to your- Of course, of course, you know, and I, I go to, uh, I've never been in Berlin, but I have been in, you know, in, in Munich like three times and every time they go and go and visit the graves and put flowers because it's made of, so in many ways, uh, I, I wanna, you know, I, I wanna contribute a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and, I, and I will tell you, and I will tell you more when I'm there. And um, okay. you have been busy, very busy with your YouTube channel. You you like doing that? Oh, this is uh, this is a lot of work. Yes, it's uh, it's, it's uh, <laughs> I I am training to to perform better in front of a camera. This is not easy. I I, I try to learn um, better the filming stuff, and I yeah. I uh, I'm try I learn to come more quicker to to the point. Uh, what I will talk about. And yes, now it, it makes a lot of fun. It's, it's uh, um, producing these videos is um, fantastic because um, for me, it's, it's, uh, it became a little bit boring to sit in front of a computer and to edit music and so on, do the same uh, and again and again. And I wanted to do something new. And um, yes, I, I discovered now uh, this uh, YouTube thing for, for me and for my for my skills, yes, can say that. And um, I think, yes, we are in, we are living in, in very, uh, in times of visibility, yes, you know, and, and we want to see everything in a computer. We are sitting in front of our, our computer and um, there are so many things to learn, to discover and, uh, I will try to find my own way. I hope it, it will be successful. I, I do this since March this year and um, the start is not so bad. I hope it will be much more happen there. But um, yes, I like the idea of um, presenting synthesizers in front of camera, talking about technology, but also, and this is the important thing I, I um, um, besides this uh, freak out your synth um, idea, I have also installed uh, another, yes, called, can say playlist that yeah. is called one synth only. And if I feature a special synth in, 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 in one episode, I play this synthesizer only because I, I, I'm the man who comes from, from, from keyboard castles using permanently 10 keyboards and so on. But this is also, an old way and, and you can produce music with one synthesizer. And this is what, what I show. I, I, I bring my talent into to compose a little piece of music, if, if you like it or not. It's another question, but <clears throat> I show, I use this synthesizer, I play one piece of music. And if you have not the money to, to, in, to afford uh, 10,000 synthesizers, it decide for one special item and use this and you can, in combination with a computer, for example, produce a complete track of music. And this is the message if you want to see, say. Yeah, absolutely, no, I'm sorry. I'm hope, I hope you continue to do well. If you look back in your life, um, of course, I know that Klaus Schulze had been a, a, an influence of many German musicians, but uh, is any, you know, if you look back in your career, what, are, what do you think that the, the top, musical influence in, in the way you play and the, the music that you have produced and, <clears throat> and record and so on. So. Um, yes, I must say beside um, the whole Berlin stuff, um, uh, I, I stopped to follow in, in the 90s and in, in, in the, uh, yes, and, and later, of course, but I, I'm, I'm also a big fan uh, of Vangelis, yeah. I must say, oh. because he has the ability to tell a story in three minutes um, where other people uh, need 35 minutes for and, and don't come to a point. Yes. And um, he's, 
he showed me how to write songs or how to come to the point. Yes, and this uh, is really a thing where I was knocked down from very early times when he did the Aphrodite child thing and, and whatever he started in his solo career. And um, but from the most the, the most influential recording, must say, yes, uh, which which changed my life uh, was really um, the album Moon Down from Klaus Schulze. Yes, the track Floating was um, that unbelievable combination between electronic and rock music. And um, this track has still a drive to me uh, where I still say, how did he do it? And it was, it's really, um, yes, an all time favorite track for me. Yeah, He did so many good things in this times, but um, this is really on top. Floating was really great, yeah. But yes, of course, I'm, I'm from time to time, I'm listening to other music also, in the last years, I, I, I listened a lot of to, to music from, from Hans Zimmer, for example, which I, I, I like very much because his music works um, very often without the movie. You can listen to the album and you must not see the movie. And I, I feel entertained by this. And for, for this <clears throat> and, and looking to him, I must say, the album uh, Inception is, is for me the absolutely killer killer album still. That's a very good album. Yeah, he's a very he's very talented guy. Guy. Yeah. Was, what, La, was last samurai last samurai? No, last samurai Inception. also. Right? Yeah, yeah. Was uh, Edgar Frost very influenced? Tangerine Dream in general kind of influence. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, um, this was the music I I I, I listened to uh, before Klaus Schulze. Yes, Klaus oh. Schulze came into my life in the mid of seventies, and when 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 Moondown was played in in, in Berlin radio. Yeah. But uh, yes, before it was Faidra Rubicon. This uh, this music was yes, of course. The, the use of uh, MOOC synthesizers and and, and MOOC sequencers was uh, unbelievable, and the mixture mixture the sound experiences, and it was so off world what they did uh, in those days and um, later they became more and more commercial which I didn't like so much but in the very first beginning the, that was pure uh, yeah uh, absolutely stuff. like maybe the first six albums of Tangerine Dream were yeah were very good the rest they were the same thing again the same thing again the same thing again yeah it was it became more yeah more song structure and more like a business and uh, nowadays after Edgar Frosty passed away and I don't know, there's a lot of yeah. conflict and whether <clears throat> you continue as Tangerine Dream or not. And I don't know, I don't, I don't want to involve in politics, but I, I have interviewed people that have played Tangerine Dream, about 10, 10 different people that have played in one moment or another in Tangerine Dream. And oh, I have like 10 different versions about, you know, the stuff, but I, I enjoy it, you know, I love to. You are a fan, yeah, of course. I, I'm a fan, right? I have about, from Tangerine Dream, I may have, um, I don't know, like 20, 20 vinyl records and about 50 CDs. I have a big music collection. I mean, I have four floors of music. So, I know people who have more. <laughs> and, and then from Tangerine, yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah but the die hard collectors have more. <laughs> yeah, I, I collect stuff. And, uh, and then, but. The first, yeah, Ruby Gone and yeah, one of the first early stuff from Tangent Dream was was the best in, in my opinion. But you know, it's every every. But the music that the the film composition, the film score, they, they were some of them were very good as well. And uh, you have um, you have tour, you know, in many countries, in many cities in the world. Is any particular concert that that you will never forget, or perhaps is the one that you did with Klaus Schulze that you will look back and say, man, that's the best I played. The music was great. The people was good. You know, I could die tonight and I would be happy with my career, you know. Yeah, it was definitely that one with, with uh, Klaus Schulz and Dresden. That was really an experience. And um, <clears throat> yeah, but also this one in, in Paris 2009 was, was a great thing because uh, it was so important to me uh, with all that background that I returned to to business, yes, and that was so. I wanted to do everything good, so yes, I I, I still believe that was a, a very important concert. Later, it became a little bit more uh, um, 
more stress into this whole thing because the whole situation changed. It was more difficult to get um, organized uh, or to 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 yes to get more concerts and to get more good organized concert, well organized concerts, and it was. Uh, in 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 2017, I had a um, sold out show in Hamburg in the Planetarium, yeah. and um, that was also the moment where I decided to to stop with that business. Yes, yes it was a good concert, but the the circumstances were not so nice. And and then I said, is it is it this that you want for the rest of your life, or isn't it? And I decided to to stop. Business, yes. Gotcha. Do you do you miss playing uh, touring and playing live music or, or no? But no, I, I stopped with that. As I, I really uh, I've given no concert since uh, 2017, and um, then uh, with Corona everything stopped. So so that was uh, no option no longer. And um, yes, I, I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. I'm, I'm missing not so much. And uh, yes, maybe if, if somebody uh, comes and, and, and has a good idea, yes, I, I would maybe think about returning, but not so for that, uh, get your stuff into your car and come over and uh, for 500 euro, you can play uh, three hours, but uh, then you can go home again. And so, no, that's no longer, <laughs> I'm too old for this. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm too old for this rock business. No, no. Yeah, but people, people, in, uh, you know, in Germany, you know, um, and especially in Berlin, they, they like still, they like electronic music. I don't know if the young people like it or the old people uh, like that, but it's you know like for example right so uh, Manuel Goshin uh, did a concert a couple of weeks ago with with Hans Rodilius and, uh, and um, I think they did okay you know I, I interviewed Manuel uh, Goshin uh, like uh, the week before they put the concert and, and I think a lot of people went to that concert well a lot of people maybe I don't know I don't know what people. happened there but I, was, I, I did not attend but um, yes I mean uh, Everybody must uh, go his own path to through life. Yes, if, if, yeah. if, if they if they are happy with that, uh, it's okay. Yes, and um, yeah, yeah, absolutely, man. So, wh what are your plans? What are your plans for the near the near future for uh, for 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 yourself? What? Yeah, definitely the book. Uh, yeah. I hope. I hope. I will. There will happen something very soon with it, and um, also definitely producing more episodes of Freak Out Your Synth. Yeah, that's it's a plan, and I, I I think it's it's work enough, and I must do not 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 much more at the moment because I pump everything into that uh, YouTube thing, and um, yeah. yes, it keeps me busy and happy, and that's it. It's okay. A lot of you have a lot of listening in your YouTube channel that listen to your stuff, and. Uh... Sorry, sorry. Do you have a lot of listeners in YouTube? A lot of people follow follow you and not not much love. Uh, I I need much more subscribers on the channel and, and yeah. more vis visitors, and this is very important. Also, yeah, we can we can say we know this. This is uh, also YouTube can also become an economically uh, important basis today. And um, yes, um, there are other channels which are, are much much more. Um, uh, successful, but they are also much longer on on the on the online than than that what I am doing. So uh, I need more promotion, more communication. So yes, but Wait, the things yeah. go up. It's it's okay. At the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to uh, before I go to uh, Germany, I I wanna buy like a nice like professional camera to film because instead of doing this over over the internet, <clears throat> I would like to have, you know, more a professional interview and uh, would, would be good, would be fun to do it, you know. Uh, with me or, or what? Yeah, with you, I'm, I'm going to be interviewing Manuel Koshi again and, and, you know, like a nice camera, I don't know, a nice, a nice settings, you know. 
Yeah, maybe if you if you want to do something, you can meet us here in my little studio and uh, yeah, yeah. And, and film something. Of course, yeah, you know, to that to to help you as well. No, yes, me, you know, to help you. As okay, well. great. And, then, and yeah. then you can put in you you and this interview when I send you a link, you can put in YouTube channel. You can do whatever you want. I mean, I'm very happy that people give me an hour of the time, an hour of their life. So I want them to uh, get something out of it, you know, as well, you know. So and um, thank you. So and um, so I have only two more questions left. So so what uh, what what do you do for fun when when no music related? Uh, what you like I soccer? Mean? You like football? Or? No, 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 not so much. I'm really yeah. no no the biggest um, um, soccer fan from time to time in, in nice game, yes, but I'm not not very much into it. No, I I I, I uh, like to to uh, be together with my wife, and and we have to uh, to share some some time. And um, yes, I'm I'm making some sports sometime, a little bit uh, jogging around. So the most time I'm. I'm really here working on my stuff, and I must say it's 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 uh, it's both. It's my hobby and it's my job. It's 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 it's, it's, it's not not more that that I'm not more feeling that pressure to do something. So I, I do the things that I want to do. Yes, and I do them with fun, and and this is more important than anything else to me. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. And uh, feel free to mention your bandcamp so people listener can buy your music. I want them to buy. As, you know, many stuff from you, and so feel free to elaborate your band camp name and your website. And I, I, I sh yeah, my, 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 my name. If you enter my name on Google, you will find my my website and my Facebook channel and uh, yeah. my my band camp shop and uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, everything is, is is in the internet. Yeah, and then <laughs> when when I upload the interview, I will I will I will enter the description the name so people can go to your channel and. Okay, yeah, cool. And buy your music. Yeah, of course. That's what, you know, you give me an hour of your time. So that's the least I can do for you. And uh, that was, uh, it was very nice uh, interview with you, Bern. Quite sure when I'm Berlin, we'll do part two and part three because there are too many topics that we want to go in electronic music. And, uh, and uh, it was very nice talking to you and uh, keep up the good work, the good music, keep on releasing your stuff. And uh, like you mentioned before, don't listen to anybody, listen to, your own voice inside yourself and go left, go right, whatever it is, and then keep on producing good music because you're young, man. You have a lot of stuff, you know, a lot of great music to be done and produce. And hopefully, some, you know, and, uh, movie director can listen to this review and give your your chance, uh, give your music a chance and uh, and, and play Thank that your music. Much, huh? Thank you very much, Claudio, for having me. No, no problem. A, Thank you, man. Was an honor. Thank you. Same here. And I, and I will see you in, in less than 10 months. In less than two months. Yeah, great. Happy to okay. meet you. Take care, man. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Take it easy, man. Goodbye. Thank you.